It had been a day. My evil nemesis had taken my spot as Valve Victorian, a solid gold helicopter landed in my backyard, and I was being stalked by a prince. And it all began when I almost went into a coma. It all started as I was walking around the school garden. I spotted my favorite purple flower, but as I held it up to my nose, I panicked when I heard that all too familiar buzzing sound. I tried to swipe it and run away, but it came right at me. Ow! I dropped everything, fell to my knees, and desperately searched for my medicine. You see, I was severely allergic to bees, and if I got stung, it was just moments before I would stop breathing. I've got you. I turned to see Chandler, the mysterious new student at school who always wore dark sunglasses and a long coat, holding my medicine and rushing toward me just as I passed out. As I woke up, I was staring into the most beautiful yet unfamiliar face I had ever seen smiling at me. Who is this? You're okay. I gave you your injection just in time. I touched his face and realized that I was in his arms. I must be hallucinating because one of your eyes is brown and the other is blue. It must be the way the light is hitting it. He suddenly got uncomfortable and jumped up quickly, putting his dark coat and glasses back on. I immediately pushed him away when I realized it was Chandler. Wait, were you watching me? Don't be so dramatic. This isn't your private garden. Besides, I only saw you because you were running in circles screaming like a lunatic. I looked around to gather my things and pick myself up. And what's with the outfit, Dracula? Are you afraid I'm going to discover your secret identity? And as I turned towards him, he was already gone. Okay, no one ever has to know that the class weirdo saved my life, or that for a minute I thought about him as someone other than a Twilight cosplayer. I mean, the first time he actually talks to me and then he runs away like a crazy person, and now I'm talking to myself like a crazy person. Ugh. Hi, my name is Monica, and this is my story of how my biggest nemesis became the reason I found happiness. But before I continue, please like and subscribe. That weekend, I invited my best friend Phoebe to play tennis at my house on our private court. I told her what happened, and she started screaming like a Swifty. Oh my god, Mon! He's totally into you. Ew, gross. Well, he never talked to any of the girls at school before, so it definitely meant something. He's too weird for me. Besides, I have so much going on with being Val Victorian and Homecoming Queen this year. I don't have time for a fan fiction fanatic. Rumor has it that his family has ties to the mob, and that will make your love story even hotter. I can see it now, coming to theater soon. Mafia queen and her mysterious man. That might be your fantasy, but mine is a little more Prince Harry than Dirty Harry. Suddenly, a solid gold helicopter landed right on the tennis court. Talk about be careful what you wish for. We had to hold on to the net so we wouldn't get blown into the next yard. The truth is, I was more annoyed than surprised, since we lived in a very rich neighborhood, and our neighbors were constantly landing at our house by mistake. Oh man, if this is one of the black pink girls again, my dad's gonna explode. But it was actually my childhood friend Ross, who'd moved to Germany when his mom married royalty. I hadn't seen him in five years. I barely recognized him. He ran to me and hugged me. Hey, hot stuff. Tell me how much you miss me. Ross? Holy extreme makeover. You look amazing. Where's the rest of you? You like it? I lost 80 pounds, got rid of my acne, and now I wear contacts. Are you, uh, posing for me? Just then, he spotted Phoebe standing behind me. Who's the dweeb? Dweeb? This is Phoebe. She's my best friend. Of course. You needed a pet to keep you company while I was away. Okay, well, I'm back now, so <laughs> run along, dweeby. Monica and I have a lot huh? of catching up to do. I put my arm around her to stop her from slapping Ross and smiled uncomfortably. Wow, you sure have changed. I know. The new and improved 3.0 Rasorama. He flexed and winked at me. Why don't you go say hi to my parents? I'll meet you inside. Just as Phoebe was about to say something to him, I put my hand over her mouth. I know he seems like a jerk, but growing up he was the sweetest guy. Please, just give him a chance. <laughs> what? Oh, I said I'll give him a shot. But if his manners don't improve, I'll show him how good I am with a tennis racket. My parents told Ross he could stay with us until his parents arrived a few weeks later. I thought it would also be a good chance for us to reconnect and for him to remind me of his sweet side that I used to love so much. Yeah, that so didn't happen. 
from the minute he arrived, he was bossing all the house staff around and constantly parading around with no shirt. Sure, he had a great body, but the minute he opened his mouth, I wanted to put my boot in it. Let's face it, guys. Somewhere out there, there's even someone who Ryan Gosling annoys, am I right? And to make matters worse, he insisted on taking his precious gold helicopter everywhere, to the mall, the movies, and worse, to my school. One day, the helicopter landed on the football field, and as he stepped out, he took a t-shirt gun and shot shirts with a picture of his face on them at all the girls swooning over him. Yes, ladies, and a few of you boys, I see you. Your dream man, Prince Ross, has arrived. He walked over and put his arm around me and held my hand. I thought I'd pick you up and we can go for protein shakes at the new juice bar. Just then, Rachel, the most spoiled little rich girl in our school and my arch nemesis, rushed up to him. We have never actually had royalty here. Would you sign this for me? Ross dropped my hand and proceeded to flirt with her. What's your name? Rachel, but you can call me yours. Aha! Yours! Until someone else comes along in three, two, one. Excuse me. Let's face it, you change your mind about boys more often than a traffic light says go. And speaking of that, why don't you just go? Rachel went to charge at me, but Ross got in between us both. Aw, ladies, I know it's hard, but don't fight over me. I was so disgusted that he was acting this way. You know what? You can have him. Later that day, he came up to me at the house. Can we talk? If it's about how amazing you are, no thanks. I think I've had enough of the Royal Ross reality show to last me a lifetime. Actually, I wanted to tell you I'm sorry about how I acted, and I brought you these. He handed me a bag of gummy worms. Remember when we were little and we used to bury them in the backyard because we wanted to set them free? You remember that? Of course. You were, and hopefully still are, my best friend. You were. You are. It's just that you were acting... I was just trying to impress you. you. You befriended me when no one else did, and I wanted to show you that I was finally worthy of you. You don't need all that to impress me. I chomped on a gummy. Just you, me, and maybe we eat the worms instead of burying them this time. We stayed up all night talking, and it was like I had my best friend back. I was in such a good mood until I got to school and heard the announcement. Our new valid Victorian and also homecoming queen for this year's senior classes, I didn't hear anything after that. My blood boiled. How could she have beaten my GPA? Wasn't she failing math last week? I was so mad, I wasn't looking, and I bumped into Chandler and almost fell over, dropping all my books. But he caught them and me before we hit the floor with almost superhuman speed. He pushed his sunglasses to the tip of his nose, and he looked at me with a hypnotic stare as he held me. Running from another bee? I could only manage to mutter as I started to melt into his gaze. I, uh, GPA, uh, homecoming. Oh yeah, I heard. You should definitely ask for an investigation because Rachel is as likely to have gotten those two honors as I am to wear ballet slippers to school. I felt like time stood still, and I never wanted it to start again. But then Phoebe walked up with a big grin on her face and tapped me on the shoulder. What you doing? I was startled, but Chandler didn't let go. His big, strong arms just held me. Oh, uh, I'm okay now. You can let me go. He released me, took a step toward me, and whispered in my ear. I don't know if I can let you go. Okay, Twilight, if you're done talking with my bestie into joining your coven, we're late for class. As we walked to class, Phoebe couldn't help but tease me. He is too weird for me. I don't have time for that. I want Prince Harry. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm just saying, hubba hubba. I had after-school activities that day, so I got home late and walked into an unusually quiet house. Mom? Dad? Where is everyone? Even the staff was gone. Something was wrong. Then I heard a strange noise from the living room. I grabbed an umbrella from the closet and held it up ready to beat up the intruder and slammed open the door. Whoa, okay, 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 you can pick the movie. I looked around to see Ross had set up a movie night for us with popcorn and gummy worms. Ross? Hey, baby. I heard about the whole Rachel thing, and I thought you need a little cheering up. Where is everyone? Your mom and dad mentioned going to dinner across town. I think they left you a note on the kitchen counter, and I gave the staff the night off so we could chill together. It did seem sweet, but something still felt off. I sat down next to him on the couch, and he handed me the popcorn. Wait, how did you know what happened today? Did you have one of your groupies spying on me? Aw, babe, are you jealous? Of your Rossettes? <laughs> Never. Good, because you're the only girl for me. 
he put his arm around me and went to kiss me. I was so shocked that I dumped the popcorn on his head. What are you doing? We are just friends. I, I don't think of you that way. Maybe in time, you will. I'm a prince now. I can give you even more than you already have. I'm sorry, Ross, but it's been a long day. I'm just gonna go to bed. As I walked to my room, I could feel him watching me. Okay, but I'm here if you need anything. When I woke up for school the next day, the house was still eerily quiet. I looked in my parents' bedroom and the bed was still made. I remembered that Ross said they left me a note and went to the kitchen. When I read the note, I screamed. What is it? What's wrong? The note. My parents have been kidnapped. They said if I call the police, I'll never see them again. It's okay. I'm here for you. We'll find them. He went to hug me, but I had a bad feeling, so I moved away and reached for my phone instead. Who are you texting? I need Phoebe. No! I'm your best friend. You don't need anyone else. You have me! He knocked the phone out of my hand, smashing it into pieces. I ran out the door. I had to get as far away from Ross as possible. Instead of putting Phoebe in danger by going over to her place, I ran towards the one person I knew who could possibly handle the kidnappers, someone who lurked in the shadows. I need Chandler! I ran all the way to school and snuck in, just in case Ross was around. But trying to find Chandler was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Just when I was about to give up, I felt a hand on my shoulder. Looking for me? You scared me! Oh, we need to work on you approaching people head on. But yes, I need you. I'm flattered. No, you don't understand. My parents have been kidnapped, and I need you to use your mafia connections to help me get them back. He stopped for a minute, then burst out <laughs> laughing. You, you are horrible. You are laughing that my parents got kidnapped? I knew this was a mistake. Forget you. Forget all the boys. I'll do this myself. No, wait. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just laughing because you think I'm involved in organized crime. I mean, I've heard all the rumors about me. Uh, I have fangs. I'm a spy. My favorite is that I'm a 30-year-old undercover cop, but the mafia, that's a new one. He touched my face and wiped my tears. Wait, you're not? No. Sorry to disappoint you. No, that's actually a good thing. Although this might have been the one time I needed it to be true. I'm so sorry to hear about your parents, and of course, I'll help you find them. Maybe it was his confidence, or the fact that I didn't know who else to turn to, but I believed him. So, the first thing is... Just then, Ross came barreling down the hallway in attack mode, heading straight for Chandler. Take your hands off of her. I'll save you, Monica. Chandler whipped off his trench coat and mocked Ross by waving it at him like a bullfighter. Taro, Taro! Just as Ross was about to pounce, Chandler pulled back the coat to reveal a locker, and Ross drove head first into it. That just slow him down for a little bit. But Ross got up and was as angry as ever. She's mine. And as soon as I stop seeing double, I'm coming for her. Or maybe not. Time to go. He grabbed my hand and we rushed out of the school doors to his motorcycle. I'm not getting on that thing with you. But then I turned to see Ross running towards us. Change of heart? He tossed me his extra helmet and we took off. We drove for a while to make sure we weren't followed, then pulled over. I think we should go back to your house, see if we can find any clues. Good idea, but we have to be careful because I don't want to run into... The Rossinator. But before we go, I need to know, why did you agree to help me? We don't even really know each other. You mean saving your life doesn't fall under the category of we're friends now? Hmm, okay, good point. But I feel like you are avoiding telling me about you. Well, I would love to take you for coffee and tell you my life story, but you might want to rescue your parents first. Also a good point. Okay, there's a door at the back of the house that leads to the wine cellar. It's been sealed off, but if we can get in, I can get into the house from there without anyone seeing. Once we got to the house, I tried to pry it open. Ugh, it's been closed so long it must be rusted shut. Here, let me try. He handed me his coat. If it's easier, you can take off your shirt too. He paused for a moment and gave me a flirty smile. I mean, you know, so it doesn't get dirty. Oh, I think you would like me if I was dirty. Then he tore off his shirt, and it was like I had won the hot guy lottery. Yet when he tried to open the door, he only got it to move a little. Maybe if we both try. You grab the handle first, and I'll wrap my arms around you and we'll pull together. The one time I don't have my phone to post this on Instagram. As he put his huge muscular arms around mine, I could feel his heart beating. And once again, I wish I could have made this time stand still in that moment forever. Then suddenly, the door gave way and we both went tumbling backward. I landed on top of him with our faces so close that our lips were practically touching. Your eyes are so beautiful. Were you born that way? No. He looked embarrassed. What is it? You can trust me. 
I actually grew up in the poor section of town, and one day I saw a little boy wandering the streets, about to get hit by a car, and on instinct I dove in front to save him. The next thing I know, I'm waking up after surgery with this eye, and it turns out the boy was the governor's son. He paid for the best medical care, and it even sent me to finish my education at your school. Holy Bruce Wayne! Is this guy too good to be true or what? This would be that moment in the movie when we would have our first kiss. Just then, I paused because I heard quiet yelling, except I didn't imagine hearing my parents yelling my name in the background. Then I realized it actually was my parents. I jumped up and rushed into the wine cellar, and there were my parents tied up and blindfolded. I ran to set them free and hugged them. Who did this to you? We don't know. Last thing we remember, we were on our way to dinner, then we heard a helicopter and everything went dark. Then we woke up here. Helicopter? Obviously, Ross. But we can't prove it because we didn't see him. We only heard a female voice. I think I might have an idea, but we would need your mom and dad to stay out of sight, so Ross continues to believe that he controls the situation. My parents agreed, and we brought spare food, blankets, and a corkscrew from the pool house down to the cellar to make them more comfortable. Call the police in exactly three hours and tell them to come to the school to arrest your kidnapper. And mom, dad, don't drink all the wine in the cellar. We rode back to school and snuck in through the gym. Okay, super cop, what's your plan? Well, you know how you think I'm all mysterious? I'm about to reveal to you who I really am. He walked me into the audio-visual classroom, and all the movie nerds turned to look with their mouths open. You brought a girl into the secret chamber? How many times do I have to tell you, Joey? It's not exactly a secret. It's a classroom at a school. Potato, potato. Hold up. You're a movie nerd? Yep, and proud of it. And me and my group of nerds are going to catch Ross confessing on tape. You see, we helped install the security cameras in the school so we can access them. Security cameras? Hmm. Can you access footage from a few days ago? Sure. What are you looking for? I'm not sure, but I'll know it when I see it. Go back to a few hours before they announced the Val Victorian. Hey, weren't you supposed to be? Don't remind me. There! Right there! Is that Ross sneaking into the office and changing the winner to Rachel? I knew that jerk wasn't working alone. I bet he did that for her so she would help him kidnap my parents. That must have been the female voice they heard. Now to put our plan into action. I borrowed one of the nerds' phones and called Ross to meet me at school. Once he saw me, he ran and hugged me. It was all I could do not to vomit, so I played it cool. Oh, Ross, thank God you're here. I was so worried for you. The police arrested Rachel for tampering with the school votes, and she said she was going to blame you for kidnapping my parents. What? That, that's crazy. I had nothing to do with any of that. She must be saying that because she has a super crush on me. But you know, my heart and my helicopter belong to you. Just then, Rachel came out of the AV classroom where she had been watching on camera as Ross blamed her. You liar! You are the one who wanted to kidnap her parents so you could save them and make her fall in love with you. Oh, Ross, you did that for me? Oh, that's so romantic. Well, in that case, yes, it was all my idea. I would do anything for you. That's a wrap. The police arrived, and even as they carted him and Rachel off in the police car, he was still patting himself on the back. I can't believe you're choosing him over me! I I'm a catch! Phoebe came running up to me and gave me a great big bear hug. Mon, I've been so worried you weren't answering your phone, but I finally talked to your parents and they explained everything to me. I knew that jerk was no good. Maybe next time you listen to your best friend. A hundred percent from here on out. Best friends forever. Later that night, Chandler and I finally had that cup of coffee and learned a lot about each other. Monica. I've liked you since the first time I laid eyes on you fleeing from a bee. I knew then you were my movie queen, and I just hoped that you'd be okay with dating a poor movie nerd on a scholarship. So, is this the part in the movie when the hero finally kisses the heroine? Nope. I, uh, uh... This is the part when she kisses him. Thank mm -hmm. you.